Now, the Bank of Ghana has today given the strongest indication here that it may ban all individuals responsible for the collapse of seven indigenous banks in the last one year from ever doing business in the banking sector. The central bank's so-called fit and proper regime will apply to shareholders, directors and managers of Unibank, Sovereign Bank, Royal Bank, Beige Bank and Construction Banks. The licenses of these five banks were withdrawn by the Bank of Ghana last week after it was established that the banks were insolvent as a result of widespread bad banking practices. In fact, some of the managers and directors of these defunct banks are already managers of other financial institutions. More on that shortly, but first to Mr. Osei JC, Head of Banking Supervision at the Bank of Ghana, detailing the steps they plan to take against these managers, directors and shareholders. The bank itself must have a way of checking all these things. They themselves must have a checklist for integrity. Okay. They must have a checklist for experience. They must have a you checklist mean the for qualification. For the yeah, so mm. what it means is that the bank itself must do its homework well before it comes to the central bank. Okay. Then we will also take it up there. And going forward, we are going to enforce the fit and proper guidance that we have, we have, we have issued to ensure that yeah. people, that's people who run our banks, can be trusted because they are handling depositors funds. Yeah, let me go to the first points that you raised. You stated categorically that if someone has run a bank down or has been involved in running a bank down, that means that person cannot own a, a bank again. Um, would that apply? Should we assume that this will apply to these persons involved in these any of these seven banks? C- certainly, that's the way we intend going. That's the way we intend going. And we, on our own, like I said, have a way of determining this. But you also agree with me that it has, uh, it has, it has to be sometimes uh, proven by a court of competent jurisdiction. I, what I'm not saying that we we'll have to wait for uh, a court to rule on that person before we enforce the fit, before we enforce the fit and proper. That's what I'm saying. We have the rules. The checklists are there. So as and when the applications come in, we're going to use the checklist as 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 a benchmark to evaluate such a person. And if we have to decline the application, we we'll just go ahead and decline. While the mm. court also does its work. But with these persons in particular, considering the role some of them played in the current states that their banks are in, would, would the bank be considering not allowing them to set up another financial institution? Yeah, when the applications come, we'll determine. We'll use the guidelines. It is early days, yes. But what I'm saying is that we have the report, we have the findings, and as and when we receive applications, as and when we receive applications, we we'll use the checklist as a benchmark to evaluate, and a determination will be made. Okay. Okay. Uh, some of these shareholders are involved in other financial institutions, like, um, but not not banks. Do you think that the same standard should be applied to them when they are running these other um, institutions? Like some of them run pensions, some of them, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You, you see, uh, if you look at Act 90, uh, 930, the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institution Act, uh, Act 90, 2016, uh, it's for. The contents are applicable to both banks and savings and loans and uh, all those ones. Those that are regulated by Bank of Ghana. Are you getting it? Yes. So the rules that we have made uh, apply to these institutions. Uh, For some of them, we use the concept of proportionality uh, to exclude some of them. For instance, the corporate governance. Uh, What's the concept of proportionality? How is that? uh, What it means is that uh, if you take an institution like uh, microfinance, the kind of structures that you expect a bank to have, Mm -hmm. are you getting it? You shouldn't expect the same structure by way of uh, governance in the microfinance because uh, it would be too much for the microfinance organization and it could be very expensive looking at the size and complexity yeah. I get it. So as far as we are concerned, if you take the corporate government for instance, it is applicable to uh, the banks and the savings and loans, uh, finance houses okay. and all those things. Okay. But we're talking about pensions and all those things. These are institutions that are regulated by SEC, Security and Exchange Commission. Commission. I get it. Mm-hmm. And for that matter, you cannot go there and say that you are enforcing okay. the contents of the corporate government document on these organizations because we do not recommend we do not supervise them okay but by way of good practice those organizations even though we do not supervise them they could adopt the content of the of the of the document so the Bank of Ghana also says it has presented names of individuals responsible for the collapse of the five banks to the Yoko for investigations as the new receiver begins work this is the allegation okay. the investigations established that the BOG complied with its statutory duty by ensuring that the tender was duly processed by the procurement unit and evaluated by an appropriate evaluation panel. Then, 
Uh, B, there, there are other things they found, but no breach. B, breach of statutory duty to review and refer to the Central Tender Review Committee for a concurrent approval of the purported award to System Switch Systems Limited in the amount of 4.6 billion. Uh, which if is it comes out that somebody compromised, the appropriate sanctions will be applied. That's a report. We have done the report. And uh, the period in which uh, these things uh, occurred are clearly defined. Are you getting it? And uh, uh, it was uh, these things occurred under the administration of uh, 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 some people. And once the people have been identified and there's the need, they are found culpable by the law. It, I think it is important mm -hmm. that and they are found culpable by the law. Uh, that appropriate sanctions will be will be, will be applied. That's right. Um, so who gave? These banks that have licensing issues, who gave them the last set or should I say the initial licenses and what due diligence was done? Who are the officials? Uh, I, I think uh, uh, so. F uh, once we can define the period in which the licenses were given, I think we can clearly identify the people who give these licenses. And I'm, I'm happy you have come out to ask uh, the, f the, the, the provisional and the final. You see, somebody puts in an application for a banking license and you would have to do your due diligence up to a point in time. And once you are satisfied that uh, a set of documentation submitted to the bank have been verified and they've been found to be authentic and accurate, then what you do is that you give uh, the person a provisional license. Then provisional means there are some other uh, compliance issues that would have to be met. Then... Once the person comes to, uh, once the person goes ahead to meet the other outstanding requirements, then you give the person the final um, license. But you see, at that point in time, when you give the provisional license, you would have verified the capital, you would have done some other verifications, and you gave the provisional Which license. Which department specifically? Yeah. Uh, it is done by the banking supervision department. So your department? Yeah, my department. Then... Uh, the, the, the time comes and you issue the person with the final license. Then, because you want to be sure that the capital that the person brought in uh, stayed in the business, right, and it did not go out of the business, six months after that, or a period after that, you go back to do another examination. You go on site to do another examination, and the examination will involve the verification of the capital that the person brought. So at this point in time, when issues come up, when you're doing the on-site verification after you've issued the final license, then you begin to ask questions. Where is the capital that was brought in? Then if you find that the capital that was brought in did not stay in the business, then the necessary action would have to be taken. Is that what you found after those six months? Well, so that's uh, the head of banking supervision at the Central Bank. Well, today, one of the individuals that may be affected by the enforcement of the fit and proper test, uh, of course, who also used to be the board chair of the now defunct sovereign bank, Dr. Kwame Echamponche, uh, broke a silence and he's insisting uh, uh, that uh, he did no wrong. In fact, he insists that he resigned from the board of sovereign bank for, uh, four months ago and therefore has nothing to do with the collapse. My colleague, uh, Raymond Aqua, uh, Joyce with the studio with, with with more on this, but but Raymond, we had the uh, the head of banking supervision at the Bank of, Bank of Ghana make the point that the fit and proper tests will apply once they enforce to if you're running a financial institution, but also expect that even for institutions that are not uh, under direct. BOG regulation sh should adapt these fit and proper uh, principles and apply. In the case of, let's talk about Dr. A A Kwame Echamponche, for example. Okay, um, we'll come to the statement he issued yeah. shortly. Is he involved still in any other financial uh, institution currently? He's and the, and that actually, this may, may apply yes, to him? He's actually the founder of Glyco Group Limited and actually serves as his executive chairman. And he's also served as chairman of the Glyco General Insurance Company Limited. He established Glyco in 1987 as a specialist life insurance company. Now, if you go to the website of Glyco, you have him there as also on the board of Golden Link Savings and Loans Limited. 
that's what the website of Glyco actually says. So he's heavily involved in that particular sector. Okay, and, and so clearly if the Bank of Ghana apply, decides to enforce this, mm-hmm. it's possible, we're speaking to his law shortly, maybe caught in this particular web, yeah. but he they issued a statement, he issued a statement t- today, mm-hmm. Essentially saying that, listen, I have nothing to do with this. What does he say? Yes, I mean, the statement starts by touting his experience and competence in the department. The fact that he has always been what they call a very astute gentleman. It puts out that some media publications are putting him in bad light, though. But there's a specific section that is the penultimate paragraph. It states that in keeping with his values, Dr. Kwame Echamponche resigned from the board of Sovereign Bank early this year. When it came to his notice that certain improprieties had taken place in the affairs of the bank without his knowledge. And he has never had anything to do with the bank ever since then. It is therefore unfortunate that attempts are being made to soil his reputation purely out of mischief and bad faith. Okay. So that is, and there's a, there's a resignation letter that we've seen also, mm-hmm. uh, dated, I think, 27th March. Yeah, it's actually 27th March this year. It was actually sent to the, it's, it's the chairman, he sent it to himself, and also copied to the Register of Companies, the Managing Director, the Governor of the Bank of Ghana, and the details are pretty clear. It says, it has been my pleasure and a great honor to serve as chairman of the Board of Sovereign Bank Limited from inception. I took the chairmanship position of the bank at the time, believing that all was well. Unfortunately, however... This was not the case. And it continues by saying, at a meeting held with the Bank of Ghana on March 22, 2018, my attention has been drawn to certain issues based on which I can no longer continue in my current position. Press one to the said meeting and the understandings reached, I have to resign from the board, effective 28th of March 2018. And he proceeded by adding that I wish the board of directors, management, and the Bank of Ghana as a whole, all the best. Raymond, stay with me because we'll go through the other names who possibly may be caught up uh, yeah. in this uh, fit and proper test that the Bank of Ghana may apply. Uh, let's speak to lawyer uh, for uh, Mr. Kwame Echampon Che, who joins us on the telephone line right now. Mr. Kwisi Amwafo Ajiman, thank you, sir, for your time here on Newsnight. Hello, hello, Mr. Amwafo Ajiman. Um, hello. Thank you, sir, for joining me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, on the statement that your client issued uh, today, can you tell us how long was he involved with the sovereign bank as the as a board chair? Oh, he he as you you may well know, he has been involved. The bank itself has not been around for you know so too long, and I think that he has been involved from the early part of the the bank's from inception. Um, yes, from inception. Yes. So he was involved from inception and never knew, as the no, Bank of I, Ghana I, I quoted... I cannot confirm exactly the date that he became the board chairman, but I am aware that he's been involved before um, this year. Okay, but the, the word you agreed with was from, the, from inception. He was there at the beginning, I think you said. Possibly, possibly, yes, but because I do not have the exact date, I don't want to be very exact because I don't have... They did. Uh, and regardless of that, over the period that he was there and as a board chair and presided over all the key decisions, policy level, etc., never knew that the bank, in essence, and, and quoting what the Bank of Ghana said about the sovereign bank, that the bank, it emerged that the sovereign bank's license was obtained by false pretenses through the use of suspicious and non existent capital. He wasn't aware, he never became aware of this. Uh, well, I, I I do not you know, speak for the bank. Let me make that clear. And then let me before we even go on, I I, I should have um, greeted your listeners. Um, I'm sorry. Now um, I want to be on record that I'm not speaking for um, Sovereign Bank, and so uh, I would only limit myself to what I know yeah, about uh, Dr. Champuche. Um The Bank of Ghana. The Bank of Ghana statement that you, you read, I think if you look at the whole statement, the Bank of Ghana never said that um, what was the capital and the other application documents which were brought were, you know, based on false pretenses. What I understand the Bank of Ghana to have said is that the money which was brought um, came from another bank. And therefore, 
Um, later on, that bank, when that bank, that bank also was in need of money, they withdrew it. And, and so it is not true that at the time that the license was granted, the money was not there. I think it was verified that there was money in existence or evidence of some capitalization which had been brought you know, to satisfy the, the, the requirement for the, the consideration for granting the license. So, so just to clarify what you're saying, that under the chairmanship of your clan, yes, the sovereign bank indeed had the capital, had borrowed it from some other bank. Is that what, you, that, is that what it is? Yeah, I think that based on a uh, bank, uh, bank of Ghana statement, that was what um, uh, I, I, I gather. Okay, so and, and this bank they took it from, then went back for their money? The bank subsequently went back for the money. But I think that uh, the money which uh, was sent from the other bank, um, which was given to um, the, the promoters to, to, to use and subsequently, you know, pay back or whatever arrangement that they have. When the bank that gave the money also became, you know, troubled. Insolvent. And th in this yeah, case, just to clarify insolvent. and be very specific. I don't want to use that word. When okay. Became insolvent. No problem. Yeah, let, 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 me, let me just now, clarify. Are you talking about Capital Bank? Yes, I think bank of, the Bank of Ghana mentioned Capital Bank. That the capital bank then decided to also, you know, go for all the money, as I understand. And then that included part of the money. It's not as if the money was not there, but the problem which had happened in the, in the one who gave the money also, you know, resulted in they also redrawing the money. But the reason why we have come out is that even in the process of withdrawing that money, or evidence of the money which had been used to support the application. Kwame was not in a, involved, because ordinarily, I think that he being the one in whose name the money has been brought, he should be the one to authorize the withdrawal of the money. But when that money is given to um, the one who is presumed to have lent the money or given you the money without his authorization or his involvement, then the impression is being created as if he has gone back to take the money. Kami has never gone back to take any money. I, I, I'm, 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 forgive me, I'm slightly confused. Um, you say, when you say Kwame hasn't gone back to take the money, was the money given in Kwame's name? Did, did Capital Bank give the amount to Sovereign Bank in Kwame's name? As I understand, yes. I see. As I understand, as I understand the money which was given... Uh, or the, I think it was in the form of treasury bill or some other form. I think the details. That's why we have issued a statement that the details should be verified. Okay. So 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 so, so, mm, so 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 just to clarify. So Capital Bank gave the loan to Sovereign Bank to establish itself, and that money was given in the name of Mr. Champon, who then later becomes the board chair of Sovereign Bank. That's what you're saying. Yes. 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 Yes, that is that is essentially what I'm saying. What I'm saying is is that the money which was given, wherever the money came from, the money was brought to Bank of Ghana to satisfy the requirement for the license. And so the one who gave the money later on then got into trouble. So that person needs the money. And the person then goes back and says that I'm taking the money. But I'm saying that the the if the person takes the money and the person the money which has already been used as uh, uh, in support, will be in support of the lenses, and then the money is given without his knowledge. That in itself is something that you know makes him a victim, rather than now being accused that he has gone back. He has never gone back for any money that was brought. And how come the capital gave that amount to Sovereign Bank in Mr. Champon's name? How, how did he get involved in that? No, uh, even if you if you have been in business, and I think we all do as we do private business. Uh, sometimes that you would have an arrangement, uh, either in the form of loan or in the form of whatever arrangement you have. And then if somebody is willing to support me to set up a business, and I take the money from the person, and then I'm running the business. In the course of running the business, that person then says that I need my money, and so. 
I, I just get yeah. that, but I just wanted to explain. When you say it was given in his name, was it the guarantor for the loan? It was not. I'm saying that the money which was given to him was a transfer. Bank of Ghana has made that statement. It was a transfer from um, Capital Bank, which was given to the notice of Cap uh, uh, what do you call it, Sovereign Bank, as capital to use an indefinite period. So, if that money had not been given back to uh, Capital Bank, when the Capital Bank itself was in, in difficulty. I'm sure Sovereign Bank would have been sovereign. But I'm saying that that arrangement is not something that I've been authorized to speak on. So okay. I not want to but, but, but the fundamental it. question, your fundamental point is that your client resigned in March. And therefore, in fact, when we spoke to you on midday, you said he's a victim, knew nothing about this. But from what you've said, if nothing untoward happened and the money was there, what triggered his resignation? But the money was not there, as Bank of Ghana was saying. The money was not there because the money had been withdrawn by people who gave who gave the money. And 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 even if you give money or even I borrow money from you. No, I, I understand the point. They, they took their money back because, of course, they've given you money. Yes, then, then he yes, of course. But he, he ought to have been involved to authorize that. Yes, you can withdraw even though the money came from you. The money. It's lodged in my name. So if you are withdrawing the money, then I should know. But when the money is taken and my attention is drawn to the fact that the money has been taken, th th these are matters which I want the media to go into and to find out at what point was the money taken and who were the people who took the money. You tell me. How, who, 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 how the who, who took the money and yeah, never informed? The money. Say that again. I'm saying that we need to go behind you are speaking oh, for the butcher. He doesn't know who took the money when the money was given first in his name. Yes, and and other people have taken the money. They have withdrawn, if you like, the money from wherever it was without his involvement. That in itself is something that would would it, uh, would appear to be a wrongdoing against him. But uh, when that happened, when the, when the moment he became aware that this is what has happened. Then he realized that no, I can no longer continue because at that point, then he became aware that there's no money, you know, to depend on or to support the the license which has been granted. And based on which, with the at the meeting with Bank of Ghana, all the parties agreed that. And he when he offered to resign because he said, no, I have a reputation to protect. If this is what has happened, and then the which means that we can no longer go on. And so he resigned from that point. Is Mr. Is Mr. Che a shareholder in Sovereign Bank? I suppose so. I think I would have to verify that, but I suppose that he he was at some point. I will have to find out. So he's a shareholder, and yet he claims he cannot be blamed for what happened to Sovereign Bank. He was not only the shareholder, but was the chair of the board until four months ago. Ivan never said that he has not had anything to do with Sovereign Bank. Um, what we have tried to do and want the public to understand. No, you, what you, what you said to us is that you cannot blame him. Interpreting the whole thing that happened as fraud and then false pretenses. Also false pretenses, it was money which was there. And the false pretenses mean that you say that you have something which you don't have. And, and now, now that you've brought it up, I must tell you that all that you told me about um, what the Bank of Ghana actually said in the statement is actually cannot be found in the statement. Let me read you what the, what the Bank of Ghana actually said in quotation marks about Sovereign Bank. It says, it emerged the Sovereign Bank's license was obtained by false pretenses through the use of suspicious and non-existent capital, end of quote. That is the Bank of Ghana speaking. You dispute that. Yes, that, what I'm saying is that it was not non-existent at the time that the license was issued. At the time that the license was issued, it was a verifiable you know, amount of which was there. Yes, but subsequently, but, as but, the Bank of Ghana checked... It was checked, a transfer, but you see, it didn't... Uh, it, the statement that they issued is not contradictory to say that it was a transfer from somewhere. If it is not non-existent, how can a transfer be made and uh, the same way say that it is non-existent? Because the statement that you read from Bank of Ghana that it says that 
the money which was used to but you, you, but you admit but you admit that money was withdrawn at a point yes. so no but they, they, earlier on in the, the same statement they had indicated that it was a transfer from capital no it did, nowhere in the statement did they say it was a transfer you have to, you had volunteered that information to me tonight. no no if you if you read the full statement i have read the full statement i have in front of me here there was a, just one paragraph on sovereign bank specifically never said anywhere that it was a transfer you volunteered that information to me tonight no, I think that if you, if you, I'm saying to you, I have that, that statement in front of me well, in in well, detail. Well, but, uh, There's one I, paragraph I on sovereign bank you, never I, said I'm that. I'm telling you that the money came from Capital Bank, and the money was verifiable at the time. Subsequently, there had been um, some uh, withdrawal of the money, and that resulted in the non-existence. But so it is not as if at the time that he sent the uh, the application. There was no verifiable uh, uh, money, you know, that that was used to support. Now, that. now you even added another point. Now, at the time that he sent the application, your client sent the application for Sovereign Bank to become a bank. Sorry. Did your client send the application? No, I I I am not aware of submitted the application. I don't know for a fact who submitted the application, but I know that I'm saying that um, at the time the information that I have. An instruction that I have that at the time that the license was, was obtained and then the application was submitted, there was something to support the application. And I'm sure that is why after the due diligence was, was done, the license was granted. Uh, and so your clients currently is insisting from all that we've read that, uh, of course, he resigned uh, for Masago. But you've also confirmed tonight that he may have some shares uh, in, in Sovereign Bank and therefore had far more powers as Sovereign Bank, uh, of course, I, both as a chair of the board and also as a shareholder, possibly, as you've indicated. It now, a, I thought that I've answered you've answered that question. My, 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 my question to you, really, on the back of that is, with all that has gone on, what does he intend to do now? He is already resigned. The bank, as I understand, is no more in existence. Bank of Ghana is already doing, still doing some work on, on the, the other banks which are involved in these problems. And I believe that Bank of Ghana will do the right thing. So still talking and investigations are being conducted. I believe at the end of the day, whatever the outcome of the investigation will be, the public will get to know. The Bank of Ghana has indicated to us today that they may apply the fit and proper test that may affect your client. And we know your client already has interest in Glyco. Your reaction to that? Well, 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 Kwame, I don't, I, I, I don't think that the, this discussion that we're having we should involve Glyco. We, I have not come here to, uh, to talk about any company. I'm talking about Kwame Chempuchi as, as a person who is my client. I have not taken instruction from any other you know, entity. So let me limit my responses, you know, to the, the, the issues that relate to Kwame personally for now. Okay, Mikosi, and just finally before you go, can you tell us who withdrew that money from Sovereign Bank? Evans, I, I think that this is something that you can easily, you know, find out if oh. you go to Bank of Ghana. Even if I have the information, Bank of Ghana is a primary source. So as I said to one of your, your people in the afternoon, I think that the thing to do is to verify these things from the primary source itself. I don't think that it is in my mouth to see who did the word, because there will be evidence there. If the money was withdrawn, even at bank, at an ordinary bank, the private account, there will be trails, there will be record to show who did what. So I think that these are things that can be verified from Bank of Ghana. And I would implore... Uh, you and the other people who are interested in the matter to verify. Then we can talk properly. When you also have got your information from an independent source, then we can have a discourse. And just again, finally, uh, this fit and proper test that Bank of Ghana has indicated today, is that your, uh, your, your position, that it doesn't affect your clients if they in intend to apply it? Even when we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. Let, let Bank of Ghana take a decision. And then we examine what the Bank of Ghana would, uh, would do at that point. And then we make a decision. Uh, at, at the moment, I, I would only be conjecturing. I don't want to do that. Nothing like that has happened. If 
um, there, there, there is a plan or there's a decision to do anything like that as a lawyer. I would wait to see what the content of what he do will be. And then that will inform my reaction and my response. Now, tell me this. I have information to suggest that your client, uh, Ichamponche, and his fellow shareholders filed documents with the BOG saying that they had invested a total of $111 million in sovereign, in sovereign bank and in treasury bills and fixed deposits held in local banks with specified maturity dates. Now, the alleged security holder uh, company, MC Management Services, formed in the very month of investment, was majority uh, owned by one of them. But the source of the uh, 111 million was capital bank funds, and from what we understand, had been taken from BOG liquidity support under the forged signature of a capital bank MD. Are you aware of this? I'm not aware of what you're talking about. If, if it is something like that, I'm not aware. I, I only speak to matters that I know of. Well, thank you, sir, for your time. That's uh, the lawyer for the uh, former board chair of Sovereign Bank, now defunct Sovereign Bank. Now, he mentions, he introduces, and let's put this in proper context and clarify. When he says that the Bank of Ghana gave details about the money being a transfer to Sovereign Bank, we didn't know that until he volunteered that information. In fact, if you read a statement, nowhere did the Bank of Ghana say who loaned money to Sovereign Bank. But he's confirmed that to us today, that in fact, Capital Bank, which is now defunct, loaned money to the foreign uh, Sovereign Bank to start a business. And it was loaned to Sovereign Bank in the name of the man who then eventually becomes the board chair of Sovereign Bank, who is, he's, of course, he's speaking for, uh, Mr. Echan Ponche. Now, let's tell you then, who were the people at Capital Bank, um, who were the directors of Capital Bank then, who may have uh, advanced this loan to Sovereign Bank in the name of Mr. Champonche? Raymond. Three key people that come to mind. First and foremost, the board was chaired by Reverend Mensa Otabel. Um, the board has membership from William Atuesian, uh, who is the founder of that particular bank, and also the MD of that particular bank, is Fizrad Odonko. Okay. I'm sure you know him. He's a very popular uh, banker in that particular space anyway. So these are the three prominent people on that particular board. And with the kind of money that we are talking about to start a bank, then, and George is here with me, then the minimum capital to start a bank was what? I think they came in during the time when they had actually kicked in the 120 million Ghana cities. If I am right, so they were required then to provide that amount of money. So I, I still need to clarify on the date that they started operations. By that it, time, it was around that figure. I think it was around the 120 20. million. Ghana now the cities. the point you're making then is that these direct and, and to, for that amount of money to be advanced, it, it, there's no way it could have happened without the knowledge of the board. Correct. Obviously, the board might be involved in that, yeah. and so. As we're saying, these are the individuals at the mm -hmm. time yeah. who may have been involved in the advancing of the money. But as again, we've had confirmed here today, that money was then at some point withdrawn from Sovereign Bank. And he says confirms is the reason why the board chair, in whose name the money was first issued, resigned because he didn't know who withdrew the money. He yeah. won't tell us who. Mm -hmm. But let's still go to the fit and proper. Raymond. Yes, the other members of the board are you may okay, surely please be go ahead. Mr. Kofi Kwakwa is also a director of the board. Alhaji Ahmad Montia is also on that particular board. Yes, that we know for a fact. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the fit and proper test. And we, we mentioned, he says when he gets to the bridge, if the Bank of Ghana applies that to his client, who we've said already has interest in Glyco, they would cross that bridge. But there are other individuals involved in the collapse of the five banks that may also be affected. Let's look at Beige Bank. Uh, yeah. Beige Bank's um, group chief executive officer uh, was Mr. Michael Hinaku. I mean, he has been at the bank for, and he's the founder of that particular bank in 2008 after he's been in accounting for almost 10 good years. Now, Beige has other sister companies. Yeah. So there's Beige Pension Trust. Mm -hmm. This is a corporate trusted license to carry a business pension trustee administration in that particular sector. And uh, that's under the NPRS Act anyway. And it's operational as we speak. There's also other companies related to, there's the Haven P Pension Trust, which is part of it, which was also part of the bigger beige uh, institution. There is also what you should know about the institution that Mr. Hinaku founded. 
it's big time. It's called the Beige Group in us all. Yeah, and, and he, of course, at the helm. Yes, yes, yeah. And they are the subsidiaries of that particular institution. So that's how big it is. Yeah, you have the you have the Beige Pensions, for example. Yes. And then there's also the uh, the, the the there's a second one which is the uh, and 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 that is an important one, the Beige Assure, yes. which is uh, according to the firm's own website. Is an authorized financial services provider offering life insurance products primarily in the lower to middle income market. Mm -hmm. And so if you're applying that fit and proper test, it might affect him in terms of his involvement with these institutions as well. Yeah. Which other individual may be caught in the web? So Dr. Kwabla Dufour Jr. was the MD of um, the group Unibank. Now you do know that he is the son and that particular Unibank is part of the bigger group in that the family owns. And this is a family business and has interest in other financial sectors too. So let's first know that this entire conglomerate of the family business is led by the former finance minister and the Bank of Ghana governor then, Dr. Kamala Dufour, um, which is interested in Unicredit and Star Assurance. So we know Unicredit and uh, one of the leading savings and loans companies in the country. Star Assurance is also what we know to be a privately owned insurance company which was incorporated somewhere in 1984 and it's licensed to carry out other corporate and retail businesses in the country. So that's how widespread the businesses which Dr. Kamala Dufour Jr. and also the main Dr. Kamala Dufour are involved in, which has other engagements, conglomerates like the Star Assurance and also Unicredit. Uh, Roman, thank you very much. And uh, still listening to News Night here on Joy 99.7 FM. Uh, George is joining me with the latest from the world of business. And George, this is a story that is still unfolding. And even you hear a lot of rumors even before this action was taken by the regulator. And it looks like some of these conversations are confirming those rumors before the action was taken. Yeah. Interesting. The revelations tonight about the, the capital bank and how the monies went to the uh, sovereign bank and how it was then redrawn, fascinating stuff, of Interesting. Course. So it looks like more is to come on all these. But interesting, also, when you engage some of these banks that have been collapsed, they, they argue that what the Bank of Ghana is putting across it's not the actual case. And maybe yeah. that's the time rose when they will well, come out with their side of the story as in the actual situation on the ground. And even so, we'll be looking in business on how these actions would also is going to impact on the entire financial system, especially for other local banks because of this action that has been taken by the central bank. And also commercial banks and financial institutions would not struggle to comply with the revised anti-money laundering and financial uh, terrorism law that the Bank of Ghana has actually, actually put out to ensure that from the beginning of this month, everyone must comply with this. The Business News on Newsnight is brought to you by MTN Business. Welcome to the new world of business. Kingdom Books and Stationery, your number one stop shop for all your office essentials and stationery heaven plus and set size pre pleasant on humans tough nightmare on inset united pension trustees my own pensions pension papa pa, pa, and marco to part distributors of chevy vehicles one two three four oh don't worry grandpa there are still five ripe and 15 unripe mangoes on the tree <laughs> and that's my boy Grandpa, it's still 1.2 kilograms of rice in the container. My boy. And how much credit did I spend last week? Well, you spent five CDs on calls, two megabytes on data, and you sent five SMSs. We are the only network that tells you exactly what you have spent and when you spent it. Dial star 545 hash to access your statement on MTN everywhere you go. The Kingdom Books and Stationery Limited's Back to School promotion is here with us again. From the 1st of August to the 30th of September, Kingdom Books and Stationery Limited is giving a generous 10% discount on all school items like textbooks, pens, pencils, erasers, exercise books, and much more across all our branches in Accra, Tema, Kumasi, Takradi, and Cape Coast. Parents, teachers, and students, please hurry while stocks last. For more information, call us on 0302-764-101 or 03 0276420 or email info at kingdomgh.com. You can also visit our website www.kingdomgh.com. Kingdom Books, where quality and affordability are both assured. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> 
Kusipa, you're still listening to this budget reading. Che, Masa, se budget no sisa. Now so what's sabi? Che, be say me so me share my personal budget. Ah, now I yan we dey our journey pension ho. Hey, we dey one man one pension plan o. Sign up to my own pension plan with United Pension Trustees and gain access to higher interest with additional benefits such as savings account and flexible contributions. We dey pension pa pa pa. Secure your future by signing on to my own pension from United Pension Trustees. Go to your MTN Momo menu by dialing star 170 hash. Select option 9 for pensions and insurance. Then option 1 for my own pension. Then you select option 1 to enroll and follow the prompts. Make daily, weekly and monthly contributions to build your wealth with United Pension Trustees. For further inquiries, call our customer service center on 0242-436-880 or 0302-208-042. My own pension. Pension pa pa pa. That is the sweet sound of excellence. That is the sound from Mac. Yes, Mac Ghana is the number one distributor of the world's best quality Isuzu and Chevrolet vehicles in Ghana. Isuzu trucks from 1.5 tons to heavy duty vehicles. Isuzu buses from 15 to 33 seaters, double and single cabin pickup, available in automatic and manual transmissions. We also stock a wide range of Chevy cars, from SUVs, sedans, and small cars, fully loaded with exquisite specifications. All of our range of Vehicle standouts due to its high fuel efficiency, safety, luxury, spacious interior, world-class delivery, and after-sales servicing. What's more, we offer flexible payment terms to meet your pockets. Mark Ghana is the sole distributor for Isuzu trucks and pickups, as well as all range of Chevrolet cars in Ghana. Call us on 0302-813-919 in Accra or 0242-039-550 in Kumasi. Visit our website. MacGana.com. MacGana with you for the long run. Joy 99.7 FM. You welcome back to Business on Newsnight and confidence in local banks in the country could be affected badly in the coming months. Now that's the warning coming from financial consultant and lecturer Dr. Lord Mensa. Now it follows the closure of five commercial banks by the regulator in the country. There is more in this report. Dr. Lord Mensa's worry is based on the fact that the recent regulatory action, which resulted in the collapse of five local banks, could give credence to the fact that most of the local banks are not doing well and they would struggle to meet the new minimum capital requirement of 400 million cities by December this year. Most of the local banks are struggling in terms of revenue mobilization. Now people are turning their funds to foreign-owned banks. You know, I think that that's where they feel sick in sending their funds to them. It's clear on the ground. What it happens like this, obviously the trust in the financial space has gotten lost. And if people have money now, I trust me, they won't like to turn it through the financial system again. Already, some of the local banks have been hit by serious withdrawals a development that has resulted in a lot of them facing some serious liquidity challenges. Some of the local banks have told Joy Business that unless government steps in to save them, a lot of them may be forced to go down. Joy Business is even learning that some of these local banks, including Construction Bank, indeed submitted recapitalization plans to the Bank of Ghana, which delayed in getting the necessary approval a development that resulted in the regulator closing down some of these commercial banks. The vice president of the Ghana Association of Bankers, Frank Edu, has also indicated that the recent actions could affect local banks negatively. The governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, has maintained that at least 15 banks could meet the new capital requirement of 400 million cities by the end of December. And that was a business tech report in a related development. Now, some have maintained that the current development is actually affecting a lot of savings and loans as well as microfinance companies in the country who are currently facing liquidity challenges. Yeah, George, and of course, and when we had an interview with the lawyer for the former board chair of Sovereign Bank, mm -hmm. uh, I indicated to him that in the original press statement, that the, the seven-pager, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it, it wasn't in it that transfers had been made. Okay. That's a fact. However, there is a Bank of Ghana appendix mm -hmm. uh, of details regarding the 
other banks, yeah. in which you find the the, the, the mention of the transfer uh, from capital to um, from capital to sovereign bank. Okay. Now, in addition to that, though, that appendix also talks about subsequent to its licensing, a substantial amount of the bank's capital was placed with another financial institution as an investment for the bank. The bank has, however, not been able to retrieve this amount from the investment firm with which it was placed. And it has emerged that investments were liquidated by the shareholders and parties related to them. And it confirms that mm. the uh, Mr. Ch Champonche was a shareholder of uh, in, in Sovereign Bank, uh, he says, although he says he cannot really confirm, okay. in the, but it, it's supposed to be the case. He also says, following inquiries by the Bank of Ghana, the promoters of the bank admitted that they did not pay for the shares they acquired in mm -hmm. the bank. Now, the additional information that is in here is what he volunteered today, okay. which is that the money was in fact paid in the name of of Mr. Champonche, okay. of course, who says he resigned. In fact, the Bank of Ghana acknowledges that, in fact, he did resign uh, and and and, is, and has pursued that a particular amount. Mm. Interesting development uh, events. And I know this will not just end now. More developments on that one as you go on. Now let's look at other news. And commercial banks and other financial institutions would not struggle to comply with the revised anti-money anti laundering and terrorist finance laws. Now that's the view of expert and chartered banker Eric Niboy Korti. Now there are fears that the revised guidelines, which comes with more stringent measures, may be difficult for most firms in the country to comply. But Mr. Korti doesn't share this view. Um, the fact that the, there is not much variation between the, the previous the existing law and the review document means that there hasn't been any significant negative, negative thing in the environment. That is why the review is not so exhaustive, for want of word, not too much. But for as a professional, and having met some of my, some of my colleagues at Virus Fora, I'm tempted to suggest that even if they are not very ready, it is not beyond them. So the important thing is that, just as I have done a comparison of the, previous, the, exist, the existing and the current, uh, the, the new ones, I will expect them to be doing what I have done, to be able to identify what the modifications are. Now, failure to comply with these guidelines could result in an institution being asked to pay about 60,000 Ghana cities. Or if you are a financial institution or even a commercial bank, your license could be revoked by the Bank of Ghana. Insurance firm SIC is optimistic of winning the legal tussle between it and the finance house Ivory. Now, this was after the Supreme Court granted SIC the request to actually let the court hear a case. The court earlier this year upheld the insurance firm's appeal against Ivory Finance on the sale of its assets to defray that owed Ivory Finance over the last five years. Managing Director of SIC Insurance, Stephen Odro, has been speaking to Joy Business about measures that they've instituted to ensure that they don't get to this challenge again. We don't write credit guarantees any, any longer. We do write bonds. We cannot, we cannot say we are not going to write bonds. Okay, it's part of our core business. But credit guarantees, we don't write anymore. The other measures have been put in place that we won't Absolutely. get there. The other measures, in fact, even the bond market, uh, the qualification is quite stringent. Okay? based on the history of, of late another company was involved in credit guarantee and it wasn't pretty so we are not we are not i want to pray we are not writing credit guarantees as of now that's the managing director of sic insurance Stephen odru and finally the outgoing managing director of Nestle Ghana for Dublin is heading to Pakistan at his new head. Now, this was after Nestle Ghana appointed Philom Natan at his new board for Nestle Ghana. I mean, heading to Malaysia market, uh, hasn't been working for Malaysia market for several years. Now, Madam Frida Dublin is heading to the Pakistan market as its first African female to achieve that rank in the world's largest food and beverage company. Interesting development there for the female advocates and having the Nestle boss gone heading to the Pakistani market as its new head. And that's all for Business on Newsnight. Thank you very much, George. Let's take some of your, your comments that you've sent uh, via WhatsApp, uh, via 0244-340-437. Uh, this one here uh, says, 
The names of those directors and shareholders who run down these banks should be made known to the public and all other financial institutions should, should publish the names of their directors to inform Ghanaians so we don't get swindled henceforth. And that's from Isaac from Asamankese. This one from Kofi Seydou says, if the president knows that he's, he has nothing to lose and he's indeed incorruptible as he wants Ghanaians to believe, then he should give the energy minister a sack to save uh, the sinking ship. Also, Evans, there's a message also uh, talking about this uh, document that you've been trying uh, to uh, you know, rectify. There were some uh, concerns that were raised earlier. Uh, this one says, uh, please, uh, the lawyer is getting me confused. He's not properly briefed. And uh, this one also is talking about uh, he reading uh, that document in the Bank of Ghana uh, statement. I think you're talking about the transfer it. from capital to, to sovereign. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's an appendix. Uh, I was referring earlier to the, uh, the statement that was issued on Thursday, a seven page uh, document that has no detail as far as the transfer, but there's an appendix okay. uh, that talks about the transfer mm. um, that was issued separately from what was issued on Friday night. Okay, so this one, that message was from uh, Barry Makubaji and then one also, no name. It says, Evans, the lawyer's reference to Capital Bank, I believe, was made from a document read to him by your colleague on As Empire. Yes, so, so that, document that, is a, that, the, that document is the appendix that was issued uh, subsequent to the initial one okay. that detailed the uh, what the decision the Bank of Ghana had taken. So yes, there's a document existing that details that as well. And it's time now for sports. Baba Tando is here with the latest. How's hey. the invitation all going? Preparation well, for it. you can't imagine what Gazem have up their sleeves, but uh, I'll tell you that after this one. The IBF's number one lightweight title contender, Richard Comey, says his latest win came as a result of discipline and focus on his corners fight plan. Last Saturday in the U.S., Comey stunned his opponent, Yardley Cruz, with a barrage of stinging combinations, uh, which left the American with no option but to quit only 29 seconds into the second round of your contest. Comey is patiently awaiting the result of an order from the IBF to the current champion, Mikey Garcia, to defend the title to him. Should Garcia fail to defend the title um, against Comey, the sanctioning body will have no option but to strip the American off uh, it and set a date for Comey to fight his closest contender for the title. Meanwhile, the boxer has been reviewing his performance from last Saturday. Like I said, uh, you know, Yadley has been around with, I mean, some of the big names I have wanted to fire with. So, you know, he's an experience. Even though we don't have to look at his records, he has been there with couple of decent guys and it's given them a hell of a bit of a you know a tough time and you know it's only the fight that's time between me and fighting for the water so like i said yeah you know, i don't want anything to happen and i don't want to be caught with a surprise so my mind was to go in there get a job done which i did exactly what i mean the corner and my team we all like we all plan to do so you no know, it, it was a great i don't want to take any um I don't want to take any risk, so I just go in there and do what I have to do. And obviously, I came out with the result. Ghana's Richard Comey is speaking there. Now, MFR to you, the subject of your interest. Africa's leading cement manufacturing company, Gassim, are more than poised for this year's edition of the Joy Sports Invitational. Team Spirit was high when I visited them, them at their Tema plant, and in no time, members of staff wanted to show me and the whole world what they had up their sleeves. CCO Singh, head of IT, did the ceremonial kickoff and scored from the sports three times in a row. Head of marketing, Benny Fifi Asian, talks about Team Gassem's prowess and how they are ready to conquer corporate Ghana come September 1 at the Lizzie Sports Complex. The toughest uh, you can have of any structure is uh, when you're doing construction and you need cement for that. And it's synonymous to the way our team is built up. We're tough. And so we were born tough. Uh, you can see the toughness of the guys, the way they, they are, the morale is so high. Uh, we, we're encouraging you to take the list of all the people you've met in the gas and plant today. You will see the same faces on the field. And we're calling for the same level playing field for everyone who's come to toughing us up because we are tough already. And this competition, I think for us, the diversity of it, the basketball, the football, the CEOs kicking, and indeed even the surprise that we don't know, we're prepared for all of them. So that's how tough we are. Evans and MFA, are you tough enough to face Gassem? Ah, Gassem. They should bring it on. They are cement people. Oh, they, Everything they, should, they, they do they is hard. We too, we are media people. <laughs> they, should, they should bring it if on. If they bring cement, you bring Mike. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's your sports.
Thank you very much, Baba. Now, let's head to the National Identification Authority because tonight executives there are debunking claims of non-payment of salaries by some workers of the authority. The workers have since threatened to embark on a sit-down strike for non-payment of their three-month salary. According to them, whenever issues of their salaries come up, they are asked to wait until they sign the appointment letters first. The aggrieved workers say this has been going on for months now and they've given the authority up to close of day Friday to resolve the issue, else they lay down their tools. But the executive director of the NIA, Professor Kenna Tefua, maintains the delay is as a result of the inability of some of these workers to stick to certain contractual agreements. Listen. It's, it's unfortunate that in this country too many people run to the media when they have legitimate grievances. I'm the head of this authority. This complaint has not been brought to my attention. They're going to be truthful, honest. They'll tell you, my doors are always open. Going to the media is not the surest way to address it. It's a waste of everybody's time. That concern has come to my attention today. They have worked hard, and a liberal deserves his or her wage, and they will get their wage. The funds availability is not the issue. The issue is that there is a contractual relationship that must first be entered into between NIA and the workers. To this date, only 80% of the 650 or so workers have actually signed and submitted their appointment letters. Some of them are in the field working and yet have not signed the contract and yet they expect to be paid. That's a non-starter. Two, even those who have signed and submitted, some of them I had to direct that we chase them in the field, mm? some on the motorbike, I'm the dispatch rider, to go around and distribu distribute the letters to them for them to sign and have them collected and brought here to be processed. Third, there is a daily attendance record. When you go to work, you must sign that you have attended work. But the most important thing is also that they must provide bank account numbers. We cannot pay people under the table, over the table, beside the table, or near the table. You heard there, Professor Ken Atefo. Now, a contender in the race for the presidential candidate of the main opposition NDC, Joshua Labi, has written to the party announcing his intent to lead the party in the 2020 election. That adds to an earlier letter by former Trade Minister Eko Spiogabra to announce his intent as well. It's however emerging that the National Party executives failed to show up at the party headquarters when a team of Mr. Alabi arrived to present uh, his letter. Uh, lawyer Victor Kojuga Adawudu has been speaking to my colleague uh, Kwesi Parker Wilson. Today is a Monday. Right. The party as I get to normally, you find them on Tuesdays. Because Tuesdays, party as I get to have meeting. The party is still yes. running. Yes, yes. That's why the administrator here. Especially no, no, that that's why the, is, is, no, no, that's why the administrator. No, that's why the administrator is here. He's the administrator. So if the administrator is around, where did he get his power from? It is fake. It is neck that appointed him. And he's the administrator. Recognized, legitimate. So we, we don't need to wait and say that until all the party executives are there before we submit. No, because you're picking information that the general secretary should have been present to receive this letter. Who says so? He's the chief executive officer of the party. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Um, I believe that the general secretary would have had the information that we will be coming here. If he's not here and the administrator is here, I don't see anything wrong with that. You heard the lawyer Victor Kujuga Adawudu. Now, Evan said uh, there's this word that's been going around uh, from last week up until now. What word is that? Consolidated. Consolidated. That's the name of the new bank, correct? Yeah, that's it. And yeah. uh, on the weekend city show with Sammy Fortin, uh, Ruben and the other comedians, we're trying to uh, pronounce you know, it. Yeah, pronounce that's it. how we leave you tonight. My name is Evans Menta. Remember that Nana and Sakwa is up next with That's My Opinion. And he says, please hear me out. This week has been the consolidated week. Consolidated. Eh? 